a quick update on the situation here in the global tyranny of Ireland in this great scandemic. The great scandemic of 2020, COVID 19. They're still called COVID 19 50 years from now. They've got us up better less crappy name uh, in the news football sold for three hundred thousand dollars in a, in an auction uh, it was the football from uh, castaway where your man it's called, the football is called Wilson you actually see it in the uh, my Facebook page, my Facebook story. Yeah, uh, the weird and wonderful life that's still around. You know, uh, called Wilson. Wilson the dog. Not a dog. It's football. Anyway, he goes mad. Stuck on an aisle now he has this football as a friend and he goes man this sort of sums up my situation uh, 18 months into this I've barely I don't think I've had what two conversations with people the whole time most places are back open right everyone's got the backs well 95 of them was our back, 95% of us, I'm an unvaxxer. We're, we're still in shutdown, the unvax. We can't go to pubs, uh, restaurants, and other, other indoor settings. The chief medical officer wants to have extended to more places as our punishment, you know, for being unvax, for being against the shutdown, for being against the masks, and so on. Uh, in other countries, vaxes, people, young vax are getting banned from jobs, getting sacked, getting fines. Most of Europe now has the vax pass in place. The vax pass being the thing on your mobile phone. So I did another video where I said if mobile phones are now mandatory, of course they are. You can't come out and openly admit that because. They be saying, you know, yeah, you live under complete tyranny. Yeah, openly admitting it. But yeah, you have this box pass on your phone. Your phone now has everything about you. It tracks all your movements, follows you around, the government's monitoring the whole damn thing. Uh, you still have to wear the mask. Even after all, everybody's being vaxxed, you still have to wear these masks. Nobody seems to be questioning whether the masks and actually do anything. You know, last year, or th this year, this year, sorry, this year, on January, we were in lockdown for five months, like complete lockdown. The only place that you could go was the shop. So you, even though you, they had mandatory masks, there was nowhere you could wear them. And nobody was questioning whether they actually even work. Like you think, the one objective thing a mask could do was keep the places open. But they couldn't even do that. And even then, people don't People don't say to themselves, wait a minute, wait a minute. We, can't, we have these mandatory masks that we have to wear everywhere. And we can't even go anywhere. We can't even go into any places. If, if they work, surely they could keep the places open. Said it was no. I even saw a thing there. Oh, yesterday. Some person who's been cocooning. Cocooning, still cocooning. For 18 months. And then we go the first time going to the shop. 
They're having a breakdown. I'm rather getting angry at our government, who scared the wits out of them. It made them think that the style of they're going to live forever. They're getting angry at somebody wearing a mask under their nose. You know? Rather than getting angry at the government who robbed all the freeze and shut everything down, these are getting angry at the unvaxxed. Rather than getting at the gov angry at the government who destroyed businesses, these are getting angry at the people who fought for freedoms, fought to keep things open, your basic fundamental rights. They get angry at those. No, there's much else to say. I just wanted to capture the day where we are. Talk about the health, the HSC, the health services. Close to being, it's close to overrunning. They never had any shutdown in Sweden. Just remember that there were no shutdown in Sweden. The healthcare system never got overwhelmed. And yet here in Ireland, strictest shutdown in the world, in Europe. And the health service in November is about to collapse. The only thing going, this gun just got going for it is weather. Which is quite nice. Colours. I do miss autumn. The past is so fleeting. It's a fleeting moment of Hey dog. Anything else? I don't think of much else to say. No. As I said. You know, you could argue, you know, oh, no one was going to get it right. But by God, did some countries get it wrong. And now, global tyranny is here. And everybody's just accepting it. Also, more restrictions were lift last year. There's all sorts of stupid rules, right? We're just going to lift, go through the stupid rules. A little quick lift. A little quick shot on this of stupid rules. My club's open, right? I'm talking about the mass. No one's even questioning whether the mass even do anything. Everywhere, everywhere I've brought them in, except Sweden. We're in the far lower cases right now of Corona than nearly, actually, than every country in Europe, right? And they never had a shutdown. Anyway, my club's open. You have to wear a mask. <laughs> So when you're sitting there, you wear your mask, <laughs> when you drink, you have a drink, you can take off the mask to drink. And if you go over onto the dance floor, you can take off the mask to dance. And you're also allowed to kiss. Kissing is now allowed again. But yes, the CMO is making a voice on kissing. So, stupid rules. Uh, Mask in restaurants, yeah, you, know, you have to put the mask if you want to go to the bathroom. You sit there eating without the mask, but you get up like it's like it's up in the air, like it's at, like it's at, it's like it's at your you know face height. You used to be only able to eat for an hour and a half in restaurants. If you were buying a drink, like you have to buy a meal with it, and the cost of nine euro at least. Like as if somehow the virus knows. Oh, oh, this pair, this, this is a pain because they paid over nine euro. The, the virus will stay away from them, or the virus is standing there waiting with a clock, with a watch. Oh, you're gone past an hour and a half now. Uh, stupid rules. Have I mentioned the mask? Have I mentioned the bell ringing connected to most? People, people aren't using the hand that we were walking around Millfield. And we saw people they weren't even wearing, using the hand sanitizer. Christ almighty. 
we can cocoon him for 18 months. I think, I think that's coming out of cocoon now after 18 months. Oh, this fucking skill run. Look at this. Look at this shit. Look at these lazy jets. They're about five minutes away. I think they couldn't bloody walk. I walked to school every single day of my life, even when it was raining. It's up shifted here, going to the big rig. As we leave Balbriggan, just want to see if I can drop this chap. Sort of drop him. Signing out here. Give him the look. The glass out from. Like I was saying, the mass thing is what really gets me the most. The fact that people can't get their head. The fact that people can't. There's that kid now. Can you see him? People don't question. Wait a minute. They're not mandatory in Sweden. Sweden never had the shutdown. Figures there are the lowest in Europe. We have mandatory masks everywhere. Everywhere. And we now have the highest vax rate in Europe and the highest case rate in Europe. We spent 2021 in five months of lockdown, complete lockdown, the only place you go was the supermarket. So the only place you could go wearing a mask was the supermarket. And nobody's actually questioned, wait a minute, if masks work, nobody's questioned if masks actually work. No one's actually saying, wait a minute, surely they could have kept, if they believed they worked, surely they could have kept them open. And also they reduced the capacity on on the uh, on transport, right? This is during the first wave. Mass went mandatory. Again, it was complete shutdown. Everybody was shut down. The only place to go was the supermarket. You didn't have to wear them. At least you didn't have to wear a mask. Like look going around, look like a bloody idiot. They reduced the transport limit down to 50%. Then they started increasing it again. But then as restrictions came back and the mask came in. Guess what, what the limit was on transport? The same, the same, with or without masks. And nobody, no, nobody. It's like Hitler said, how lucky for the governments of the world that people don't think, don't ask basic questions. Oh, the God left is nature. I've already decided. I already decided to take to take all my freedoms back for myself. So I already decided I'll never go I'll never go anywhere ever again. Uh, some shill for the government. The book source chapter is shut because of the pandemic. I mean it's it's shut as long as it's gone out of business. Because uh, you know, people are shopping online. Shill from the government. Have to go. We work for Navin. It's a traitor. I'm not a traitor to the Irish people, like most people who work for the government. And we're, in, we're in civil war times here, by the way. I just want that clear. Like that, that's the fav- That's the that's the atmosphere for me. People that work for the government are tired in their pockets. So many people. So many people. We're just, just, just demoralised, defeated, and they belittle us, they belittled Irish people. I decided, yeah, I told Mike I went to, I told this shield, just don't answer politely, answer this question. Do you want to deal with reality? No. That just blocks me on Twitter. Oh, that's the easier way to deal with it. 
see what the damage you've done, see what all the freedom you've taken away. Hey, you're again, your nice retirement. I hope it's worth it. You all know what the first job was. All their jobs came after that. This is all I have now. Oh my god. All that land is for sale. Coming down here. This Hampton Lane. This actually used to be where uh, the Hitler Youth used to come in Ireland. Used to come down here. So there's a big estate. This is all the biggest estate extending out. Extending all the way out towards the golf course, out that way. And anyway. Back to the current tyranny. Yeah, I have already decided. The only, the only, the best thing I could do as an individual against this is this horrible science state. And all the traitors, traitors in this pocket. Corrupt politicians. Civil service was constantly constantly belittle the Irish people, whether it be culture and crappy forestry program. Let's not reforest Ireland, so the forests are destroyed by the British Empire, and let's not just, let's not just grow them back, no, let's bring in spruce, acidic spruce, dead, dead woods, can't have Irish people feeling any sense of pride. Yeah, I've decided. This is all going to be a big massive house in the state, all the way out here, all the way as far this, this road. Those are the developers, of course. The developers have well, got to make money. There's another corrupt class just been treating us like dirt. We're lucky we, we have Argyll and still just beyond here. If they, if they wanted to destroy that, they wanted to turn that into a housing estate. They turned Kenyur Park into a housing estate. They destroyed the house there. Anyway, I'm, out, I'm on a private road now, so I have to stop. Yeah, this is all, it's all going in for construction. I don't know if there's stuff here. I don't know. The developers are going to stop here, or they're going to start eyeing on. Cause like I said, they wanted, years ago, they were eyeing up Argyllen Castle and Park. Just like they did with Kenyur, they did it all over North Dublin. Just they destroyed parks, special areas that should have been called special protection areas. No, the the wet bogs, a bog of the ring, destroyed that. Well, I just I'm gonna end it now. I just decided to take back my own freedom. If this is it, like me and nature. Man needs to walk back into nature. Well, we are totally out of it now. Totally, totally, we walked out of it and now we've totally just imprisoned ourselves. Oh, no more, no more cinemas, cafes, libraries. I don't need any of those things. Uh, now on, the only place I go to. The only place I go to, I get me supermarket, I get me wine, that's it, and then, this, this is living, this is living, this is, you know, it's like this guy here, what should we be doing, get out and about, find your own activities. I was talking earlier about the, uh, it's just this is the last take now. I'm going up the old coach road here. I just want to capture it. I want to catch this day. It's a nice stormy day. Nice stormy autumn day. Yeah. The older classes, the people retired now. 
Metallic is in traders. Some people might still, you know, say, think like, oh, what are you moaned about? You should have seen Ireland back in the 80s, or the 70s, the 60s, the 50s, you know? The baby homes, the Christian brothers, uh, and other horrific. I mean, thousands and thousands of children. I'm not going to go into it. Yeah. This older class are retired now. They went along with it. They just kept they kept their heads down, they went to church. People empowered the authorities. This is just the abuse that we the Irish people get. We almost expect it from our government. From trauma bonds. From the Brits or something. People just they just they just pretended it wasn't happening. They still went to mass, they still put money. They still follow their government. Accepted it all. And here was me thinking, you know, Ireland 2019 has its problems. But you know, things are improving. And then in an instant. In an instant, that's all it took was a little flu, a little cold. Cold, bad cold, but cold nonetheless. Cold that kills people. Almost exclusively, exclusively. Over the age of 75. People who are supposed to die, who are supposed to live that long. And all of it came back and suddenly, you know, stories at the start, you couldn't get into a shop with another person, right? So single moms are going to the shop. This happened overnight now. It changed in Ireland. And they're going to the shop. There's, no, there's nothing they can do. They need their single parents. The schools are shut. All the childcare is shut. We have to go to the shop. And they're telling, oh, you can't come in here with another person. No, only one person at a time is allowed in the shop. This is back when it used to be <laughs> queues and queues outside all the supermarkets because there was limits on the amount of people allowed in, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's enough for today. Signing out. Goodbye. Good luck. Stay safe. Here's a nice spot now. Uh, this is a this is a really old graveyard. People have been living in Balrodri since I think probably the 14th century. So you'll find you'll find maybe no not that early. So you'll find the uh, graves in there from the 1700s. This is... Oh, look at that. That's so cool. The uh, world champion is buried in there. Harry Reynolds. Hey, so you find... Poor Bad Brigham. Bad Brigham was on the habit of... Um, Bad Roger was on the estate. See if I can go down here. I'm not going in there because the uh, gate. No time. I'm wasting enough time doing here. No way in over here. Town of Rory. Balrodri. Look at the stay of these little houses. I mean, I don't have a problem with bungalows. When they make them like that, like it's designed, you know. You know, it's like people with drug problems and disabilities and mental health problems. It's just designed, like, oh yeah. 
we're the state, we're the government, we're going to treat you like crap because you. We're, we don't believe in eugenics or anything like that, but we sort of actively practice it. We don't want you to give up. Hopefully you will. And here we are now. I'm going to just tell it's the Glebe. Will I continue on here? There's nothing in here, it's a boring old park. Small. It's just, it's just football fishes, really. Actually, I might do a podcast in here one day.